Heaven Tourism Field Guide. 90 minutes in heaven. Heaven is for real, not to be confused with heaven is real. Now this genre is getting a little bit passe today as some of the more discerning retailers have kind of quit selling these books. Now some of these are bad and others are worse. And I think generally that people should avoid them. And, and, and they all just to begin make one sort of critical mistake that almost everyone makes when they consider the afterlife is that heaven or paradise, the place where believers go when they die, is temporary. Temporary. Okay, keep listening. Now, I preached a whole sermon on this. Uh, what happens after you die? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. You can look it up on YouTube. But after we die, we will be, if we're believers, if we've come to know Jesus Christ, trusted in him with our hearts, so that we've received the gift of salvation, so that we know him, when we die, we will be at home with the Lord until the day when Christ returns to earth our bodies are resurrected and then we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and after that you can throw in there's probably a millennium in there too we will enjoy the new heavens and the new earth forever and that is our eternal home the new heavens and new earth even though paradise is temporary and the more vividly pictured new heavens and new earth is forever and you can read about that in Revelation 21 we would probably still like to know a little bit of details about our temporary home. After all, we like details looking up about our current homes, and all of them are temporary too. So today, I'm throwing the towel, I'm joining the trend, and I'm going to tell you about one man's trip to heaven. And all of the juicy details that he wants to know, and even better, this is the authorized version, it is in the Bible. So. There's going to be three points today. I will say them a lot, so get used to it. One, receive. Receive the miraculous. Like, we are not a church that's just sort of like poo-poos, religious and spiritual experience. No, no, we, we believe these things and trust in them because it's what the Bible shows us that we should expect in the Christian life. Second, we should restrain ourselves from speculating on things that God has not made clear. And three, we want to edify. We want to do all things to build others up instead of just to experience things. In all of this, we aim to trust in what God has revealed while experiencing a living God in ways that build others up. We want to aim to trust in what God has revealed while experiencing a living God in ways that build others up. To begin, we start at this point. And this all flows. There's, there's a flow to this section here that's really cool. And it, and it happens. So this is Paul going down in a basket. And next we're going to have Paul going up to heaven and then we're going to have, in the section we're not going to get to today, with the thorn in the flesh, Paul going back down so he would not be too elated. So there's this rhythm here. Paul, at the end of talking about all of these tribulations that he has gone through, you can read them, there's a whole bunch of them. It's like shipwreck three times. I love it. I love when he writes shipwreck three times because he doesn't even know. He's going to get shipwrecked again. At Damascus. The governor under King Aretas was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. Now, a near escape like this might seem like a ground for boasting, like, man, that sounds pretty exciting. But, like, you've got to remember Paul, like, he was a manly man. Like, Paul got arrested a bunch of times. He wasn't afraid of getting arrested, but this is the one time he kind of ran away. It was early in his Christian life and, and he like counts it like this was a loss. You know, the, the Roman generals, they would give an award for the person who was the first over the wall and here is like into the city. Like Paul now is like the first out of the wall. It's like the worst thing that you could do. Paul 
boasts of his weaknesses. Now he goes on. It says, I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. Now, we've dealt with Paul's ironic tone throughout this whole text. Because Paul, you know, he uses these things ironically to make a point. But his meaning is pretty clear. When he is boasting, he's not really boasting. When he's being a fool, he's not really being a fool. And this is part of human language. It's like when I have some great idea to fix something, I'm like, I'm going to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tape over this at home. And, and then it's like, it's just a disaster. It doesn't work at all. And, and my wife just comes up and be like, wow, that was a great idea. <laughs> By which she means, that was a terrible idea. And, and we speak like this all the time. And Paul here is doing, like, talking, going on boasting. But you realize, like, he's not really boasting. He got to just keep reading. The context is pretty clear. Now, he's going to talk about visions and revelations of the Lord. Now we know that the Christian, the Corinthians loved spiritual experience. You can read all about it in first Corinthians. Uh, all of us should, we want to receive what is spiritual, but they often went overboard forgetting that the Holy Spirit's gifts were meant to build each other up, to edify and promote love of God and neighbor. As Paul introduces this, he says, I will go on to visions and revelations. You have to think as he talks about this, this is what the false apostles were doing. Like they were very big on all of these maybe unverifiable spiritual experiences they had. And they like to talk about them. They like to boast about them. See, like, well, look at how much better we are. Yeah, like we like went up to the 17th heaven and uh, received this like special spiritual award because we're the special spiritual guys, unlike Paul, who doesn't talk about these things. So Paul talks about this man. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, literally raptured to the third heaven. And, and, and if you read this, the first time I read this, you probably think like, oh yeah, you know, Paul's talking about a friend of his uh, who had this experience. But we remember ironic tone here. We need to read carefully. And if we see, if we keep reading, we see that Paul's not actually talking about another person. He's talking about himself. Because as you read, you get down to verse 7, he says, So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh. So who is having the revelations that Paul is just talking about? Who's having the revelations? It's Paul. It's me. Paul is talking. And, and it's kind of like this, this, when he speaks, it's kind of like if I'm talking, I'll be like, well, I, I know this guy. He's always getting into trouble. He's always saying things that are dumb. Uh, he speaks kind of kind of quickly. Um, he's kind of a fool. Good thing I'm not like that guy. But, but you kind of know. I'm like, I'm talking about myself in the third person. Paul's doing the same thing here. And he does it because he doesn't want to be boasting about himself. So he, he like puts this out there in the third person to show it. Although... As we'll see, he's not really boasting in anything but Christ. Now, there's this line, third heaven, right here. And man, there's a lot of speculation, a lot of pages of commentary, and numerous theories, levels in heaven. And uh, the simplest in kind of Jewish tradition was there. If there's a highest heaven, and there's a high heaven in the Old Testament, and a heaven in the Old Testament, that's three different levels. Um... There are also in the temple courts, there's the temple courts, the holy place, the most holy place. But like so many things in this passage, like we just don't know for sure. And where the Bible has not been clear, we just want to be restrained and not speculate. Paul is like third heaven. Okay, third heaven. There isn't really a lot more said in the Bible about it. And so I won't say very much more about it. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven whether in the body 
that is like bodily, literally gone up, whole body, boop, up to heaven. Or out of body, like just a spirit, boop, up to heaven. I do not know. God knows. And I know this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body. I do not know. God knows. So the first thing here is we want to be restrained. Third heaven, paradise. It does seem in the parallel here, Paul's talking about the same place, paradise, third heaven. We do know paradise, this is the place where believers go. This is where Jesus is. Feet on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. Paul, though, constantly points out, like, he doesn't even know many details here. In body, out of body, I don't know. And if the person relating the story doesn't know, like, like we should not be speculating about this. And, and it gets to one of the most important things, like, like to be restrained. Like, we don't want to speculate. God hasn't told us. Maybe God hasn't told us something for a good reason. After all, Deuteronomy 29, 29. You should, like, memorize and think it all the time. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever, that we may be do all the words of the law, what God has told us we should do, and what God has not told us we should not speculate about. Secondly, when we see this, we want to receive. Like, like yes, the supernatural is real. Okay? And if, if Paul could visit heaven, so could someone else. Like, I, I don't see a reason why not. Like, we believe what the Bible teaches. Like, there are angels and there are demons. There's the spirit of the living God who lives in all of us when we receive Jesus Christ. Like, like spiritual things happen. And we believe in the miraculous. We believe in the healings. We believe in a guy who was dead and was raised to life and is seated at the right hand of God who will come back to judge the living and the dead. We're not just like rationalistic people. We believe in spiritual things. We do it because that's what the Bible teaches us. Now, my criticism, which I kind of led with of the heaven tourism genre, is not that these people may not have experienced something. They very well may have. That's not the issue. We believe in the supernatural. The issue is how these experiences are shared. Because often, like, well, as we're going to get to it, like Paul is going to say, I don't know much. And by the way, I can't say anything. Which makes me a little suspicious when Paul's like, I can't talk about it. When someone is like, I can't wait to talk about it and sign the book deal and make the movie. And third, we want to see with anything spiritual, we want to edify. Um, when Paul goes in his vision here, he does it so begrudgingly because he wants to come against the speculative visions that these certain people are claiming that don't help others. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, to each is given the manifestation to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Spiritual gifts must be used to help others, to build others up, not just for book sales or egos. All right, so now we come to the highlight, the crowning momentum of the text. We get to peer into the heavens, like literally. You don't get the, 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 the veil, like, torn back very often where we get to go we get to go up with paul peek into the heavens and we get to see all that the bible is going to tell us about what paradise looks like now okay get ready this is going to blow the doors off your roof oh i said this man And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. Paul, like you, you're not going to sell many books like that. 
Like, like, where are the rainbow unicorns? Like, like, where are the streets of gold? Like, we must have some streets of gold. Like, that's the thing, streets of gold. Uh, perhaps some relatives to give a message from back home. No, we only get two things. One, that Paul heard things that can't be spoken. Or he couldn't understand. And that could not be told and either it's like impossible for him to tell or unlawful for him to tell in either way in either way there's nothing just this was beyond what i could experience or tell you about now is it possible to experience heaven this person like like yeah like we believe in supernatural things like you don't even have to have, like it doesn't say paul like i was like i died and then i went to heaven. no it's like no i just went there like don't even need to have a near-death experience but we need to restrain our speculation and do all things for building up you know we have the word of god with so much testimony about what will happen like jesus says i go to prepare a place for you you know, I almost want to cry when I hear Christians say, in effect, like, now I have a testimony of a five-year-old boy. I can trust that heaven is real when we have God's word. Like, like God's word is the measuring stick to measure other things. Like, like we don't measure God's word by <coughs> other story. And so... When we get the only authorized trip to heaven, all we know is things that I can't talk about. And it should probably give us pause for anyone who sells a book based on their visions. We can read John 14. We can read the book of Revelation, the whole Bible. Um, if you want one book on heaven that I just like super recommend, it's Randy Alcorn's book, Heaven which is great. I don't have it because it's one of those books that I'm always like giving out to people and, and never get, so I need to get another copy of it. But uh, Randy Alcorn's book in heaven, which does a great job in just teaching about heaven from the Bible. What does the Bible teach? Because it's more and more wonderful than any story that you've probably ever been told. Okay, let's keep going on. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses on behalf of this man wink wink i would boast but what is this boasting he was caught up to heaven heard things that cannot be told this this person was in christ and the fact is even though paul like talks about yeah i had this experience but there's nothing to boast about because he only received from jesus like there was nothing to boast in it god did everything oh and this like i i want us as a church to be a people who is open and hungry to experience God in radical ways, like in, in spiritually exciting ways, but all the time, not speculating and miss, trusting in what God has revealed in his word and sharing with others what edifies and builds them up. He continues, though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool. For I would be speaking the truth. Now it says I would be speaking the truth because he's talking about himself here. But I refrain from it so that no one may think more of me than what he sees or hears from me. Now, he's speaking because he's speaking about the true revelation of what he experienced. And then we get to this very important line, which is really interesting. He sees in me or hears from me. Why does Paul refrain from talking about revelations? He wants them only, he wants them to know that he is a good teacher by what they see and hear, not what he's talking about. And like it must have been attempting for Paul to like exalt himself here because, you know, they're writing mean things about him. His, his letters are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is of no account. 2 Corinthians 10.10. 10. Paul says, judge me by what you have seen and what you have heard. And all along through these last couple of sermons, we've been kind of 
going through like marks of false teachers and we get kind of the last one here and that is false teachers are very like to brag about unverifiable spiritual experiences I like what, so we've seen portrait of a false teacher and i said they love money love of money really call all kinds of evils secondly they they lie they they're disguised three last times like they abuse authority and fourth they brag of spiritual experiences they like to talk about their successes they like to relate extraordinary spiritual things but true teachers avoid this as much as they can true teachers avoid self-promotion in their sermons and public ministry and paul says like look at me from what you can hear and what you can see in the same way like don't take someone's word for it if they say like oh yeah like i heard from god this today like like the bible tells us to test things to judge things all the time like it's like it, it it warns us again and again like don't just don't just listen to somebody be like hey i heard from god to do this like don't just take their word from it like they very well well may have heard from god they also may not have and so you have to weigh these things under the word of God by the Holy Spirit. This isn't to say that extraordinary spiritual experiences don't happen. Like Paul says they do. Got caught up to heaven. Amazing thing. But you might want to question people who are constantly talking about spiritual experiences but don't seem to be evident in how they're living and what they're saying and what you see in them. All right, three points. Receive. So we want to receive the miraculous. We believe in weird and supernatural things. We do. We believe in them. But we only boast of Christ. Second, restrain. We want to avoid speculation, and it's so tempting. Like, I just say, like, third heaven, and we're like, oh, I want to speculate for that. I speculate a little bit. I, like, indulge just a little bit because it's like that itch. You want to scratch it. But they're like, trust me, it's just like most itches. You scratch it. You just want to keep scratching. And pretty soon you're wandering off into vain speculation and genealogies and all of that stuff with, that the Bible specifically tells us don't do. Don't speculate. What God has told us, he has told us for a reason. Learn it. Third, edify. In whatever spiritual things we share, we do so to build others up in Jesus Christ. Not just to make ourselves look good, not just for our own benefit. And in all of this, we trust in what God has revealed while experiencing a living God in ways that build others up. To do this means that we take the word of God seriously. We take serious, seriously spiritual experience. It might be weird. We believe in the miraculous. But we restrain from speculating beyond what God has made clear. So, said we have this big vision of heaven. Paul has just told us. And so, two things of application. Number one is, what do you do if someone comes to you and be like, whoa, I had this like huge experience, what do you do? Or like, what if I, like, yeah, I have this experience. Like, what do I do with this experience? All right, two things. Number one, test. First John 4, 1, beloved, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So, said many false prophets is this person credible from what i've seen and what i've heard from them or do i not know if i haven't seen anything or heard from them then i'm just gonna like i'm just gonna take those grains of salt am i going to test it by the standard am i going to the word is this in accordance with both the spirit of what god has revealed and the word of what god has revealed and if it's not i am going to reject it and we don't think oh so reject because yeah, it's, it's so crazy because in the church today, you find generally, and there are exceptions to this, 
There are people who like accept every single spiritual, ex- spiritual experience. Like it's all good. It's all good. We're not going to judge anything. And then there are people who like won't accept anything. They're like, oh, all this stuff is all weird because all these weird things. We're not going to accept anything. But we want to like do both of things. Okay. okay. We're going to experience it and judge it by the word of God and have both of them together, which is really hard to do. We do it the right way by testing things. And then secondly, as we experience things, we want to share in so much as it builds others up. You know, Paul, it seems, never told anyone this story until he kind of had to talk about because like, oh yeah, you like, like there are revelations here and like Paul is not short on spiritual experiences. He's only short on bragging about it. And so... Am I going to share this? Am I going to talk to others because I want them to be mature and grow in Jesus Christ? Or or is this something just for me? That I should just be content with me and God? So, every spiritual experience we want to place under God's word for Christ's glory, ultimately to build up the church. And, And please, 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 Don't get carried off into vain speculation. I want none of you to go home, Google third heaven. None of you. Not at all. I just put that thought in your head and just delete it from your head right away. All right? Let's pray.